15 million Americans are dependent on over-the-counter heartburn medications. And that number could double or triple with a new study that says heartburn meds can be used to reduce COVID mortality. And while there are some benefits to these drugs, they don't come without some major side effects that you should be aware of. Dr. Mark Ratner is an expert on the issue. He landed in the emergency room due to side effects of long-term use of heartburn medication. Good morning. Great to have you on, doctor. So you have Thanks for this having me. You have this personal story you can share with us. How long were you taking heartburn medications and what happened that landed you in the yeah. hospital? Uh, so I had probably been taking uh, omeprazole, which used to be called Prilosec. Uh, that was the trade name. Uh, started out as a prescription medication. As you mentioned, it's now over the counter. I'd probably been taking it about seven or eight years. Uh, ended up with a uh, irregular heart rate, heart rhythm, and uh, had to make a trip to the emergency room where they discovered that I had a very low magnesium level, and that was what most likely had triggered uh, the abnormal heart rate. And so uh, it turned out that my low magnesium had, was a result of the fact that I've been taking this acid blocking medication. Um, uh, as a physician, I guess I was a bit embarrassed that um, I didn't realize this was possible. Uh, but in fact, uh, it's uh, all too common. Um, acid blocking medications, and as you mentioned, more than 15 million people in the United States are taking them on a daily basis, uh, block the absorption of both magnesium, uh, which is what got me in trouble, and vitamin B12 as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, those medications are now av available over the counter. Um, and they really should not be taken without uh, your, your primary care doctor's uh, oversight. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, lots of people, it's been estimated 70% of those 15 million are taking those medications without a prescription. Um, and so it's, uh, it's an issue. So this is a very cautionary tale for others about taking these heartburn medications over a prolonged period of time. So what is the message that you want people to know? Well, basically, there's really several messages. The first is um, be cautious about these medications. Uh, be aware that there are diet and lifestyle measures that can sometimes uh, significantly help uh, reduce the symptoms of acid reflux. Um, and so perhaps you don't need to rush to uh, use one of these medications. These medications are called PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. And there's a, a number of them. They used to be all prescription, um, Prilosec, Nexium, Protonix. Um, they're now all generic and available uh, over the counter. Uh, and so you can go and buy these uh, at the corner drugstore. And unfortunately, a lot of people do uh, and forget to really mention it to their doc. Um, you should uh, essentially monitor magnesium and B vitamin B12 levels uh, and uh, potentially supplement those two nutrients to uh, avoid getting into the same uh, trouble that I did uh, and ending up in the emergency room. And now we're hearing that some people are taking these heartburn medications for COVID symptoms. What do you yeah, know about that and what's the not correlation? Not much. Honestly, um, it's not my particular area of expertise. Uh, there are all kinds of studies which seem to show associations between certain uh, medications that people take um, and possibly a lower risk of developing COVID. Um, some of these acid blocking medications have been um, uh, thought to be potentially helpful. Another one that uh, we know is potentially helpful is melatonin, which many people take to help sleep at night, uh, but has actually been shown to reduce the risk of, uh, of COVID infection. Um, so that that's, uh, I think, not the main reason why people are taking these acid blocking medications. It's primarily because of chronic acid reflux uh, and what docs call GERD or G-E-R-D, gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is essentially what the doctor says you have if you have heartburn like almost every day. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. So do you think that there are adequate warnings on heartburn medication labels about these serious side effects for prolonged use? Uh, probably not. Uh, although when you go to the drugstore, interestingly, and you buy uh, a supply of this over the counter, they are only allowed to sell a 14 day supply at a time. So you can't go and buy, uh, you know, 100 pills in a bottle. Um, and when you read the box or the bottle uh, and you buy it when you bought it over the counter, uh, it says, uh, do not take this medication for more than 14 days. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, that's not really being uh, followed. 
in many instances. And you yourself say that you were taking these medications for seven or eight years. Yeah, uh, well. So as a doctor, were you unaware of, uh, of the side effects? Oh, a absolutely, yeah. And, and unfortunately, it's not only nutrient depletion, uh, which is a potential side effect, but it's been implicated. Uh, chronic, chronic use of these medications has been implicated in possibly osteoporosis, uh, in other words, loss of bone density. Uh, there's some kind of shaky evidence about the possibility of increased risk of dementia uh, and even uh, kidney failure. Uh, so chronic use of these medications is not a great idea, although if you're doing it under your doctor's care, um, then it's certainly something that you, that you should stay on uh, and, uh, and discuss. So how long would you have to take these heartburn drugs to see those serious side effects? I know for you it question. was a while, but... That's, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, it could be as short as months, uh, but typically it takes a bit longer than that. All right, a really interesting discussion. And uh, just uh, finally, how are you feeling right uh, these days, doctor? I feel pretty good. <laughs> good, good to hear. Where can people go for some more information? Um, you know, we have an ebook that is uh, available uh, for a free download. It's, uh, it's called, uh, the, the uh, URL for that is pphelp.org. Uh, PPI, again, is the type of medication we're talking about. Uh, so pphelp.org. All right, Dr. Mark Radner, he is a urologist and the chief science officer at Theralogix. Thanks so much for your time this morning, doctor. Thank you, guys. Up next